BMO Capital Markets Chief Investment Strategist Brian Belsky has a year-end target of 45.50 for the S&P 500, which is just about where we are right now, Brian. You know, we, we've been talking a lot about how difficult the last mile is for the Fed. If that doesn't sound like an environment where you want to be long the index in general. No, I don't think so. Thanks so much for having us, by the way. You know, we've been saying now for several months that we have entered uh, a renewed era of stock picking. And I think the problem with most investors, not only institutional, but uh, high net worth investors, is that they're trying to make a call on the S&P or the Qs or the Diamonds. And we have to remember that the stock market is a market of stocks. And just look at the earnings season and how uh, certain companies are doing better than other companies, how the big banks are doing better than the regionals, on how uh, it, semiconductor companies are doing better than other semiconductor companies. I don't think you want to be in these more passive type of index level ETFs, let's just say. I think you want to own stocks in here. And I think that portends to an overall trend, Melissa, I think many people are missing, is in the beginning of the year, everybody talked about this uh, path toward normalization. I think uh, what is going on is 2022 was your shock. 2023 was your awe. And as we kind of transition into more fundamental investing, we're going to kind of get back into normalized returns. And I think that's very, very positive for the markets longer term. So you've been calling for this style of investing for the past several months, Brian. I mean, index investing was easy. I mean, it was the time to just go into ETF. It was the time just to own the queues. And you could have been a winner so far year to date. So uh, how do you sort of square that, you know, saying that stock picking was, was the way you should go for the past several months when it really was just investing in the index, investing in big ETFs? That was the way, that was the easy way to go. Actually, no, I'll, I will, I will re, uh, kind of go against that a little bit. Okay. So let's think about this. Since the beginning of the year, Melissa, we've had three very distinct tech market trades, right? In January was the January effect. In March was the rotation out of financials into tech. And then really what we believe is the real true thematic fundamental move was more into the AI side of things. If you go back and look at what the market's done in January and February, actually value was outperforming and small cap was outperforming. It was really the, the March kerfuffle with financials that kind of really kick-started this whole notion of, of what everybody likes to talk about as the Magnificent Seven. But what the thing that people are missing right now is that over the last 30 days, Growth at a reasonable price has outperformed the S&P 500 by almost 300 basis points. But more importantly, and I think interestingly to us in our work, is that dividend growth as a strategy has massively outperformed the last 30 years, and no one is talking about that. I think what the issue is is that we're starting to see a broadening out of the market, and you take a look at stock performance, earnings growth, Valuation, the disparity within those three measurements is very wide. That tells you you want to own a Lilly right now versus a Pfizer, or you want to own NVIDIA and AMD versus Intel. Intel just came out of a period where they were losing money. You want to buy companies that are earning money over the long term with proven track record in terms of not only their product or service that they're providing, but their company management as well. Do you need to see... Um, soft landing slash no landing in order for, you know, your forecast to come true? I mean, what, what's the sort of backdrop that you need to see? No, I don't need to see either because the stock market last year said that we're going to see some sort of a slowdown. When the stock market's down more than 25 percent, it says that some sort of recession is coming. Whether or not we actually see uh, an, a an absolute recession, Melissa, I think it's a moot point. I think this obsession with recession and the chicken little recession that everybody keeps on trying to call it keeps getting pushed out. So what we need to see to get to our 50-50 uh, bull market, uh, I'm sorry, bull case scenario for the S&P 500, our earnings to reaccelerate, we're starting to see that. So it looks more and more like our bull market case, our bull case, I'm sorry, for the S&P 500 target that we have at 5,050 uh, 5, looks more and more realistic.